Helmets have been around since at least 900 BC when Assyrian soldiers used leather and bronze helmet. Very stylish back then, but you could look like a knobhead wearing one today. Early motorbike helmets were made of leather, a huge advance over the cardboard models as they didn't fall apart in the rain. With no regulations in the early days, riders were free to experiment with design, especially the watermelon variety. The only type where you could not only have your helmet, but eat it too. Back then, everyone thought the tougher the helmet, the better. But modern research shows that light to moderate impacts to the head are by far the most common ones. And that these can still lead to lifelong effects from brain injury. Even a so-called mild brain injury can be devastating. As your brain is jostled in the skull, there can be bruising and tearing of blood vessels and connections between the brain cells. And once your brain is injured, it takes less impact the next time to injure it again. So modern helmet design needs to focus on how to better absorb these light to moderate impacts, not just the major life-threatening ones. Hit the pause button to read the info. So it's a tricky thing designing a safe helmet. Helmet standards mainly test for these major impacts of around 250 to 300 Gs, which are towards the lethal end of the scale. But the majority of accidents involve far less impact, but still result in brain injuries. So modern helmet design, and hopefully the helmet standards, need to address how well helmets absorb a wide range of impacts. It can be likened to modern car design, where cars will crumple even in a minor accident, but progressively crumple right up to those near lethal impacts. So let's have a quick look at the major helmet standards. First, to date there's no quality research with hard evidence into whether one standard is better than another. And the good news is that all the major helmet standards do a reasonable job of protecting our heads. Although the world's largest helmet study in 1996 concluded that there was room for about 20% improvement. DOT is a US government standard that began in 1974 and was updated in 1980 and 1988. Essentially, it tests for energy absorption, penetration resistance, and retention system effectiveness. Another US standard is Snell, a private organisation that issues its own motorcycle helmet standard, which is purely voluntary. The 2005 standard came under a lot of criticism for making helmets too rigid and potentially increasing injury or death. The 2010 standard changed and allowed for more flexible helmets and impact absorption. Snell covers the same basic areas as DOT but also includes a chin bar test, a roll-off test and if the helmet has a visor, a penetration test for the visor. The third major helmet standard is from Europe, commonly called the ECE 22.05. It's required by over 50 countries worldwide, and while covering the same basics as DOT, it includes most of the recommendations from the COST 327 study, the world's largest, most comprehensive helmet study ever undertaken. Pause for more info. The good news was the European standard took on almost all of the recommendations from the COST 327 study. Many argue the European standard is the most comprehensive, but we suggest you do your own research on this and reach your own conclusions. But the fact remains that it is still based on research and conclusions from the COST 327 study way back in 1996 and there's been a wealth of new research on brain injuries since then. We believe it's high time for major international helmet research like that helmet study again. We also believe that those responsible for setting helmet standards need to urgently look at some of the new helmet innovations and look at updating their standards for example, research indicates that variable or dual density liners are an extremely cheap yet effective way to improve helmet standards, yet none of the standards address this as yet. Pause for more info. 
And while the European standard does do a basic test for the important rotational forces, several manufacturers have come up with innovative ways to potentially reduce the risks of brain injury from rotational forces, which the COST 327 study showed is a major cause of brain injuries. A final note, the best helmet in the world won't help much if it's not a snug fit or the strap isn't tight. A poor fitting helmet or loose straps can leave parts of your head exposed and even roll off completely in an accident. Ditch that old helmet if it moves around too much. Helmet safety is an area of much debate. We're going to leave this space open for any feedback or comments, particularly from specialists. In the meantime, guys and girls, ride safe and do your best not to fall on your head.